Hey friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. We've got another knife today. This is the QSP Raven, uh, product number QS122. This one's 122-B for the uh, nice deep OD green. Not, not well, just like any other OD green, I guess. It also comes with a brown or black G10. The brown and black G10 have got the flats uh, with a black coating, probably a black oxide coating. And then the main bevel is uh, just like this bevel, it's nice and satin. So only three colors. It's a decent knife, I quite like it. It's in the low 40s, D2 steel. We've got a slight recurve here, not much at all. And uh, if you're nervous about recurve blades, yeah, this might be the, the kind of knife that you would like to try out because the recurve is really subtle and uh, once you get used to how to sharpening this, you know, then you can get more dramatic recurves and you can have some really awesome knives uh, if you can get used to recurves. And it, I don't think it really takes all that much. Um, I'll show you some a variety of stones in my video that are going to be good for sharpening a knife like this. It's a flipper. It's got a backspacer, a deep pocket clip. So if you're interested, stick around. The full review's coming right now. So here it is. First thing, well, maybe not the first thing you notice, but one of the first things you notice is the G10 has got these uh, radius mill lines in it. They're good for a little bit extra traction, but they're not over traction, like not enough to be irritant. You've got a backspacer that comes out and uh, sticks out like a dorsal fin at the back with a lanyard hole right there. And um, it actually works. It doesn't make it uncomfortable in hand. I thought it might, but nope, it doesn't. Uh, big blocky jimps on there. So it's got those, yeah, you see those big jimps there, huge lanyard hole. And then it comes up past the back a little bit, and then you've got a little radius section there, uh, which makes reverse grip quite comfortable. It's got a good spot for you to rest your thumb right there, but I don't see using this knife that way very much. Just a regular fist grip is very comfortable in either the right or left hands. The pocket clip does not create a hot spot. And uh, because the uh, dorsal fin here <laughs> is, is sort of back away from the uh, main body if the main body came out this far then this back spot might be a little bit um, create a little pressure back here but right now it just it just fits in at least for me and it fits in very well it's quite comfortable there uh, then on the inside of the uh, handle here you've got a huge uh, front section and then you've got a sort of a back end finger choil which it doesn't really bother me, but it's not quite in the right spot right here. But because you've got inset liners, you could take off almost an eighth of an inch of the G10 here and bring it down just a little bit if that would be more smooth for you. you know, if you like everything else about the knife and after you have it, if it's not quite comfortable. But it's very comfortable for me if I put the two smaller fingers back here and then the other fingers here, and then I've got lots of extra reach. So if I'm trying to do some slicing uh, using the, the belly of the blade right here, that works fine. But if I sneak up, I have to sneak up just a little bit, and then I can get that divider between these two fingers, and then it's not that bad either. But if I don't think about it, if I just pick up the knife, sometimes my finger, my ring finger, just ends up on top of that. But you know, if I leave it there for an extended period of time, it gets a little uncomfortable, but I just change my grip a little bit and then it's just fine. Uh, usually I talk about the blade first, but this one I'm talking about the handle first. It's also comfortable because they put a chamfer all the way around and they put a chamfer on this inner edge. That does help because you can put your hand in here and it never gets you know, caught on a sharp edge or anything. The pocket clip 
not too bad. Uh, because the uh, G10 has been milled out and it's recessed in there, even though there's button screws, they don't stick out too far. Right now, the pocket clip is not uncomfortable at all. But I'm thinking if it was right here, at least for my size hands, the pocket clip, this end here, would start to be a little warm in the hand. So I really don't mind. The pocket clip's very functional. It doesn't have a flat edge up here, but it's got enough of a scoop that at least uh, in my experience, it hasn't had a problem going into the pocket. Here's a uh, pocket. Wants to climb over. And I haven't had it fail ever, like where it just ends up inside. So that worked just fine. And uh, with this green, that's sort of a, a dull OD green, it, you know, the knife doesn't stick out as far as being uh, attracting your eye, no more than the pocket clip would. So no problem. Don't mind the pocket clip at all. And uh, no hot spots from it, at least not for me. So now, before I talk about the blade in any detail, let's do our size comparison, mixing things up just a little bit here. Line up the pivot pins, similar size, just a little bit smaller than an Ontario Rat 1, which is a big knife. Um, the cutting edge though, you actually have about the same on these knives. So it's a nice full size folder. Uh, the drop point here and then you get a great big long belly high flat grind so it's a saber grind not a full flat grind but it's it's trying to be a cross between a full flat and a saber so yeah technically it's still a saber grind comes back and then you get a, that slight recurve right here we've got a plunge that's got a, a radius in it it's it's like a scoop instead of a straight step down and then we've got the sharpness choil right there On the spine, we've got jimping. And uh, you can see that jimping. It's, for me, pretty close to ideal jimping. Uh, sometimes jimping is you know, so deep and sharp that it's kind of an irritant on your thumb. And sometimes it's so small that you don't really get any extra grip out of it. And this jimping is perfect for me. I just, it, I like it an awful lot. Uh, the uh, flipper tab, it's got uh, chamfering on the side of it as well. And there's a little bit of jimping on the flipper tab as well. It functions really well in the light switch method where you're just pulling down like that. So let's try that. Works great. And even if you're just pushing down on a little bit of an angle, that works as well. The detent on this thing is pretty close to ideal. I really like the detent. Uh, it uh, sucks the blade in and it doesn't want to open easily, but it doesn't hold too tight either. So it's a very good detent there. Makes it easy to operate the flipper as well. As I said, everything's uh, recessed, all the liners, but you got a little exposed section with some major jimping on the lock release. But if I put the knife flat with the camera, you can just barely see the top of that jimping. That's a little less than ideal. I have found myself not always being able to release the blade uh, when I wanted to. That was when I was getting used to the knife. Being that the liners are recessed again, it wouldn't be that hard to take a little bit of that G10 off. Just a tiny bit. Like it would only take a sixteenth of an inch and I'm sure it would make it that I could just do it all the time. Uh, a millimeter and a half maybe. It's just close, but not perfect. But how much does this knife cost? Well, it's $46.55 US at White Mountain Knives. Take your 10% off with coupon code CCE, and that's $41.89. So $42 US dollars, basically. Not bad at all. That's around $55 Canadian dollars. This knife is not on Amazon. Uh, and it's not in very many stores. Some stores will just have one of the three colors. Wake Mountain Knives has got three, all three colors. The price is pretty good. I noticed uh, Messer Depot in Germany has got this knife. 
And the base price is basically identical to the base price on White Mountain Knives. It's just that they've got, you know, 16% uh, value added tax. Whereas the tax when you buy from White Mountain Knives is a whole lot less. <laughs> so, yeah, nice. Let's go over all the sizes and dimensions. And this will be on the screen while I'm talking about those things. D2 steel. Rockwell hardness is around 59, something like that, give or take a little bit maybe. G10 handle scales, stainless steel liners, stainless steel pocket clip, and stainless steel hardware. So that's kind of nice. The weight of this knife, 118 grams, 4.15 ounces. So pretty light. The factory sharpness, I made a mistake. I started testing this knife before, I, I mean using it to cut stuff, before I measured the... Uh, sharpness but I still got 165 best so it would have been better than that and 200 and less is considered sharp so not a problem with the sharpness from the factory the cutting edge length is 8.47 centimeters 3.334 inches the blade length tip to the handle 8.62 centimeters 3.394 inches just a tiny bit more so really good size blade the blade thickness is 3.46 millimeters. That's uh, 0.136 inches. The uh, blade depth is biggest right up here by the belly. 2.66 centimeters, 1.047 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, and I measured about an inch up from the sharpness choil. 0.63 millimeters, 25 thousandths of an inch. I would have liked it to be a little bit thinner, uh, but it's not terrible at all. The grind angles, oops, left that paper downstairs so it's on the screen. With this steel with D2, anything between about 18 to 20 degrees per side would be very, very good. The uh, handle now, the handle length, and I didn't count the little piece that sticks out on this backspacer fin, just up to the end of the handle here. 11.24 centimeters, 4.425 inches. The grip area, it's about nine and three quarter centimeters, about four and three quarter inches. And the handle thickness, uh, the G10 is thickest up here. Uh, it's because it already is here. So right here is where I measured it. 1.2 centimeters, 0.4725. I guess right here, 2.8. 8.6 centimeters, 1.126 inches. And the knife depth when it's closed, not counting the flipper tab, is biggest right here in the middle. 3.45 centimeters, 1.358 inches. And the total length of this knife when the blade's deployed, tip to the end of the handle. Again, I'm not measuring the back spacer sticking out a little bit. 19.81 centimeters, 7.799. So basically 7.8 inches. Not bad. Almost three and a half. And the handle here is a little less than four and a half. So, uh, the ratio there was very good, and the balance point is right there, exactly where I like a good balance point to be. So that's the specs on it. What do I think of this knife? Well, the one I have is done fairly well. Uh, one little mistake, probably on all of them, is this sharpness choil is too small. And so the sharpening on this one um, goes up the plunge. The plunge is this section right here with that radius. Let's use something smaller to point with. Uh, right here's that radius. And um, if we show it this way, the radius starts and it goes down in a curve like this. And then it gets to this surface, so it curves up. And the sharpening goes up the curve. On this side, it's a little bit cleaner. The person who was sharpening stopped before they got too far up the plunge. But on this side, they went up the plunge a little bit. And it just makes that spot look a little bit not as organized or not as clean. Uh, but you're talking about a budget knife here, so I don't really begrudge them that too much, but they should have put on a larger sharpness choil. Um, 
something you can do yourself if you want to. I did a video on how to do that. You know, if you've got like a Dremel tool, um, it's not that hard. All in all, what do I think of this knife? Well, I love the blade shape. I really like the big belly and a little bit of a recurve. Both of them are help for cutting. The handle comes down in an arc with a little bit of jimping on it. Really good grip in the hand. Feels good. Um, I think the knife looks good. The uh, milling on the handle, G10 looks good as well. Uh, the backspacer dorsal fin, <laughs> it's actually well done. I like that. I don't use lanyards 99.9% .9 of the time, but if you did, the placement for that is quite good. Um, and, you know, it's fairly comfortable, most grips, most of the time. Yeah, it's not a super comfortable knife, but it's certainly far from uncomfortable. So that's good. The uh, flipper tabs, easy to use. The detent's very good. Lockup is exactly where I want a knife to be when it's brand new. Lots of room to wear over. So that's a really good thing. Oh, I was going to talk about the stones. Let me get you some of the stones that I was going to show about uh, sharpening this knife. One of the budget solutions is the stuff. This is uh, uh, from Boride Industries. That's a, an American factory. I like the uh, CH... CS.H. I think <laughs> I keep getting the name of the stone wrong. It's a really good stone. You know, it's a flat stone. So it's got corners on the edges here. But it's narrow enough that it can sharpen a knife like this. As you sharpen recurves, the uh, edges here will get slightly rounded over time. A narrow stone like this, they're not hard to find, and you can you can buy these and use them. Um, if you're really budget conscious, this is a really cheap one I found. I got a set of these. You know, this is just plastic, and it's got cheap stones here. And if you've got like one or two knives that are recurved, you know. Every once in a while you sharpen them, something like this could take care of that for you. And this is really budget price. Uh, if I can find the links on Amazon again, I'll put links for these and for the boride ones. Or you can get something like this. This is a Venev stone. I bought, got this at Gridomatic. Really nice. It's a diamond stone and it's got a slight radius to it. So you can see that bit of a radius right there. And that's great for this kind of recurve. Um, or you can get a stone like this. I got this from Gridomatic as well. The Chocera stones. Again, a narrow flat one. As long as your recurve isn't super sharp, these flat stones, although because they're narrow, they will work just fine for a recurve like this. If you are scared of recurves because you don't know how to sharpen them, but you've got a guided sharpening system, you know, price out some stones and then you can start getting recurve blades. And sharpening them yourself. The uh, What are the last things I want to talk about? Oh, I want to take the knife apart and show you the inside because we've got ceramic ball bearings and um, ceramic ball bearings are fun. Uh, by the way, these screws are very well done. There's very little play back and forth, so it's you're not going to strip the screws easily. They're nice and clean. There's no thread locker on there. Um, let's see, this is a T8. Let's use this one. Very snug fit. Just a very little bit of movement back and forth. And even a little one like this works just fine because the uh, pivot pin is not free spinning. It's not that hard to uh, get in there. The little stop pin has fallen out of, way, out of the place yet. It's uh, a pivot pin that can actually spin freely here, but the D shape is on this side. And so that's what locks it in place. There is some thread locker you can see in there. Um, it was took a little bit of effort to break it free, but not an awful lot. So it's a little bit dirty in here. And so I'm gonna clean it because you know I did, uh, I did test the knife and I did use it. But lots of skeletonizing here. But even on this side, you know, they put little holes just to get the right weight and to get the right balance on everything. Um, ceramic detent ball and ceramic ball bearings. And on this knife, as 
a lot of uh, their newer knives, the uh, ball bearings are actually quite small. So that's it for this knife. I'm not going to spend any time putting it back together. I'll do that off camera. Hopefully you like this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thanks to everyone for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always. I won't pick this one up. I'll pick this one up. <laughs> Cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.